Now, I felt convicted in the past weeks, and I feel convicted for the future to speak out in a stronger way about certain subjects that, in my opinion, are removing us from God's mission for this remnant church. Well, this warning by Pastor Ted Wilson still applies today, considering the fact that the world is being brought into the church by some individuals. We are going to watch, interact, and apply this warning to current situations in the church. So if you are interested, I would encourage you to watch this video till the end. With that being said, let's get right into the video. Now I felt convicted in the past weeks, and I feel convicted for the future, to speak out in a stronger way about certain subjects that, in my opinion, are removing us from God's mission for this remnant church. Things that will take us out of the position to which God has called us. Let me briefly share just a few of them with you. Number one, guard against mystical beliefs and practices that are finding their way into the church through formats like spiritual formation and the emerging church. The basis of much of this is an emphasis on the experiential and emotional rather than a strong foundation on the Word of God. Read helpful information on this subject in the current Adventist Review, which many of you have received, an ASI special. It was passed out here at the convention. And note in particular a two-page article by Mark Finley. And watch for more material in the very near future on this very important subject. I ask you to read the Adventist Review. Bill Knott and his professional staff produce a magazine that can benefit you spiritually in a very positive way. Number two. Stay away from the mystical forms of prayer, such as contemplative prayer, prayer labyrinths, repetitive prayer using one word or certain phrases, or centering prayer that seems to have become popular but leads to the occult, since in many cases all thoughts are eliminated from your mind, thus allowing the evil one to invade rather than have a simple and humble prayer of sharing your concerns with the Lord. Number three, resist worship styles and music that have more to do with self-centered entertainment than a humble worship of God. We have to recognize that we have many different cultures in the church and styles of worship in our worldwide church. I accept that and you should also. But everything that is done should bring glory to God and not to the participants. Amen. Whether it be the preachers, musicians, or everyone participating. We need to focus on worshiping God and elevating and not elevating self. We should lift, I should say, worship and music should lift us to the throne room of heaven. I don't wish to offend anyone, and this is my personal opinion, but if music sounds like it belongs to a hard rock concert or a nightclub, it should stay there. Amen. What is important for worship music is that it point us to the noblest and the best, which is the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Swartz, for teaching the lesson this morning. And to Cliff Goldstein, whom I saw here in the audience, for editing our lessons. Number four. And this is a little sensitive, but I want you to understand it completely. Avoid the practice, and I speak to our church leaders locally and in our organized 
entities. Avoid the practice of inviting major spiritual speakers who are not Seventh-day Adventists Avoid having them speak to church meetings, men's meetings, women's meetings, retreats, pastoral meetings, youth meetings, and large convocations. Amen. Now, I want, I want you to fully understand what I'm saying. I am not talking about refusing or not inviting civic, government, or religious leaders to attend a meeting. We need to make friends with these people. We need to share our faith with them. But what I am talking about is asking them to give a major spiritual presentation where they probably simply do not have the concept of the great controversy theme. I want to tell you that we certainly can learn from others who are not members. And we should encourage them in their own walk with the Lord to find truth. However, we need to be very proactive in requesting humble, Bible-centered, Seventh-day Adventist speakers to instruct our church members in fully understanding God's great biblical messages for this time. Amen. Brothers and sisters of ASI, if we want to finish strong, we must focus upon Jesus Christ, upon His righteousness and His almighty Word. As in the Protestant Reformation, the Bible must become our foundation. The spirit of prophecy indicates that God never intended for the Protestant Reformation to end with Martin Luther, but that we were to continue that great Reformation. Did you see how the people seated right there were so happy about the message? The message was powerful and addressed specific issues within the SDA church and also pointed the church to what it is supposed to do as a remnant church. He mentioned mystical beliefs and practices. He also mentioned mystical and repetitive forms of prayers. He mentioned worship style and music that seek to entertain minds. Friends, I think this point is actually happening in some of our churches today. Our worship style, our music, and even some of our sermons seem to be diluted. I can see that we are doing everything to keep the youth in the church. So we are diluting our sermons, we are diluting our worship style, we are diluting our music. In fact, we are diluting our everything. And what is sometimes so sad is that even some of our pastors today are afraid to call sin by its right name because they are afraid that the youth or people will leave the church. Some pastors don't want to talk about sin anymore in the church. But what do we hear? Philosophy. Philosophy every day. I like this part of Pastor Ted Wilson's presentation. But if music sounds like it belongs to a hard rock concert or a nightclub, it should stay there. So all the music does sound like worldly music and does sound like we are in the sport or we are in the nightclubs, please, they should just stay right there. They should stay out of the church. Also, Pastor Ted Wilson talked about the invitation of non-SDAs to give spiritual presentations in our churches. I think this is so brilliant. Now, friends, there is another side of this issue. There are some Seventh-day Adventists within the church that do not believe in some of our doctrines or some of our teachings. And yet, these people are sometimes invited by the church, by some of the leaders of the church, to teach the same doctrines they do not believe or agree with the church. An example is the LGBT persons or group within the SDA church. In fact, these LGBT persons within the SDA church do not believe in what the church teaches about human sexuality. 
And yet, some of our leaders, some of our conference leaders, conference pastors, and local church pastors invite these people into our churches to teach human sexuality. Especially, Alicia Johnston has been invited into some of our churches many times to teach something about human sexuality, to talk about LGBT. I think we should also be careful when inviting people who do not believe some of our doctrines to teach the same thing they do not believe in our churches. I believe the conference or the GC is going to look into this. So friends, in general, I think Pastor Ted Watson spoke the truth with boldness. And I strongly believe that all Seventh-day Adventists would want Pastor Ted Watson to continue speaking the truth in boldness even today. I would like to end today's video with this Bible quote. And it is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 5. It says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So friends, we need to preach the present truth with urgency without any fear. Let me know what you think about Pastor Ted Watson's presentation. Let me know that in the comment section, all right? Thank you for watching this video. My name is Brother Lawrence and see you next time.